The Vancouver Sevens men's final is underway. France right to left with blue. the kickoff. It's gone on the blue side, but Gonzalez Bunny. almost onto it for Argentina. These Back big boppers, these heavy hitters up front for Argentina need to be watched. Gonzalez and his Bunny, goal. Here's Stefan Perez. What a story it would be if he could win a title, but he's thrown it straight to Marcos Moneta. <laughs> when doesn't he sprinkle a bit of stardust on proceedings? The money man scores first in the cup final. Marcos Moneta striking. I mean, he must have just looked up, and that's an absolute dream ball. Stefan Perez, key playmaker for France. He's going to wish he had that one back. Maybe some jitters early on for the French, not quite on top of their game in this early going in Argentina. Do make them pay, but yeah, that long lofted ball in the air. Can't afford to do that with Marcos Moneta on the prowl. Valentini with the extra couple from right in front. Argentina get the maximum. 25 for the season, the former World Rugby Sevens Player of the Year. Perez, experienced player, he'll shake that off. Niscol prepares to chase the restart. What a start for Argentina. Just what head coach Santi Gomez Cora would have been looking for. Here's Logiel, most experienced French Sevens player of all time. A key cog in this outfit. There's Perez to JP Barak, who Cuts out over the top to Loretra, their leading try scorer here in Vancouver this weekend. But again, Pasque back to Perez. Here's the captain, Pauline River. Another cutout ball over to Jonathan Logel. He can stand up in the big moment. Scored the winning try on Golden Point to win bronze at home in Toulouse last season. Here's Barack again, just slips on this artificial service off the floor to Perez. Pasque. From Stade Francais just flicks it out the back to Loretra from the Racing 92 club in Paris. Here's Barack again. He finds some space for Riva. Just ignores the ball runner on the inside. That was Fournier, who's been impressive for France this weekend as well. And here comes Pasquet, those big, long, striding legs over the halfway line. Good keep ball here from France. Keeping the ball away from Argentina. Theo Fournier to Barack Logel now. Well, Sadzuk, the Argentina captain, puts him on the floor. Perez, good width again from France. Riva, little double clutch over the top. Is that forward? Pasquet keeps it in field. Play on, says the referee. Just needs to stay within that white line. Perez again to Riva. So much possession here for France. But the Argentina defence holding firm for the moment. There's the inside ball that finds the try. Theo Fournier <laughs> under the posts. All that possession, all that patience, paying dividends for France in the end. Oh, it really does. And this is a really, really mature passage of play from the French. You'd have thought they'd been in so many finals, this group. After that early mistake, knowing that calming it down, going through a long passage of play, lots of phases of play, you want to put the Argentinian defense under pressure. And that's exactly what they did here. Nothing particularly spectacular, but going width to width, stretching the Argentina defense. And then when they spotted those inside defenders, were starting to get a little tired, were starting to lag a little bit. Picking them off with the inside pass, and France strike right back. Look at that. 28 passes to none. Of course, Argentina scored a try, but it was an intercept to Moneta. Seven each in the cup final. Three minutes to go in the first half. Perez goes long. Iscro to Moneta. Here's Gonzalez. Hitch kick. From the big prop forward. Look at him go. He's got on the outside of Varian Pasquet. Pasquet comes back for another nibble. Perez Advantage. is there as well, as is High Alvarez forward. for Argentina. Good quick ball for Los Pumas Sevens. Pelandini Advantage now. Ball in two hands. Iscro at pace. Runs it in. <laughs> oh, that's Argentina yeah, yeah, yeah. at their best. He's hurt on the floor, yeah, no, is Iscro, but yeah, no, no. the breakaway from yeah, no. Gonzalez. And Iskodol finishes the job. 
think it's Chris Vine. He's just saying to the referee, hey, how was that little late touch on me as I was putting the ball down? But Argentina so, so direct. And it's their two men, Luciano Gonzalez and Rodrigo Iscro, straightening up first on the left through Gonzalez and then towards the right with Iscro. And those two are such powerful, <laughs> dynamic runners. Not the tallest of guys, but they're so stocky and they get this Argentina team moving forward every time. And Argentina strike right back. Teams just trading tries right now. Well, they're like a couple of bouncers outside a nightclub. You don't want to turn up with fake ID with these two. Iscro and Gonzalez have been bossing this HSBC World Rugby 7 Series. 14-7, Argentina lead France. 1.30 to go. Good contest back by White. Came off White, says the referee, so France have possession. Here's Pasquet. There's an inside ball to Riva. A bit of Jouet Jouet in midfield from Le Bleu. That's gone forward on the floor. No, it's a Rack penalty to France. Rack is form and the ball is played. Yeah, I mean, it looked to Rack me actually, form, obviously players. further away than the referee that it might have been a French foot that kicked that one forward, but the referee yeah. judging that it was an Argentinian hand in the ruck. Once that ruck is formed, you're not allowed to use your hands on the floor. So France get a reprieve and able to kick for touch. And they've shown a lot of maturity at this tournament, France, and they've had the full house. They've had a draw against South Africa. They lost to Argentina in pool play, 21-12. That's the muscle memory they bring into this, but in all their games, they've found a way. Great Britain in the quarterfinal, Australia in the semi. They do keep calm in the big occasion, and they don't come much bigger than this. A cup final in Vancouver. Barak put on the floor by Osadzuk. Excellent defence again from the Argentina Ball captains. Fournier's there, though, and he sees a bit of space on the short side. Manetta shadows. Gets through Alvarez, though. There's the offload to Vardy and Pasquet. He's in the corner. Very good touch. Yes. OK. They're going to check, check it, but that looked good from up here. Checking yeah, I think certainly look looked good on the touchline. I think the only question no, is whether he grounded this properly. So sliding in. Oof. I think it's all in the interpretation there. So touching the ball down. Yeah, so nowhere near the touchline, but obviously the first initial touchdown is in front of the John line. So then it's whether he's still in try. control of the ball as he touches it over the line. And the referees say he is. So that will be try France and both of these teams just going back and forth. And it's a tough conversion now from way out wide at the big end of this half to by, by JP Brack, and he's so good at kicking these. Yeah, the sharp shooter from Claire Montevern, Jean Pascal Barak. To level proceedings here, he's hit it like a peach, straight through. <laughs> oh yeah, we are level in the cup final. They will go to drinks, 14 apiece, France and Argentina. Pellandini chips over in the direction of Iscro. He gets there first, but it's been, it's gone over the sideline. It'll be a France option here, but an injury on the floor. France, Rodrigo option because Iscro. it's not gone into First touch, time. so scrum or line out. Line out. These two teams have ever met okay. in a cup final. Of course, Sam this Iscro. weekend in the top four in the men's competition, we didn't have New Zealand, we didn't have Fiji, we didn't have South Africa. Perhaps Madison seeing the changing landscape of Rugby Sevens here. Oh, no, absolutely, and I think it just reflects how competitive the World Series is becoming. We can see that Argentina, their first back-to-back -back cup finals, Sorry, back-to-back -back cup finals for the first time since 2005. And right now in the World Series, if you look at the standings, two through, I think it's ninth, is separated by 13 morning. points, which is really remarkable. This okay. Time back on. And Argentina will be pleased about that. Perez threw that intercept pass to get a start at the back front. Have recovered so well. Riva to Barak, back to Riva. Angled run, he gets the ball away to Theo Fournier, who dishes it inside to Steven Perez. Asadza can't get there. Riva was running decoy, and Perez will stroll in. Oh, wow, what a comeback from it. throwing no, the no. intercept ball. Okay. That's it's what the smile's about, to, to pick up a like try. France, go ahead. Time.
Yeah, but he's and no really. striking right where Argentina is strongest, really getting through Marcus Mineta. Mineta making the tackle. I he's usually he's... such a threat to chase back. Sadchuk and Riva just having a little afterwards there. But I mean, it reflects the mental fortitude that Stefan Perez has. You have an absolute the disaster start to this game, but wipes it off, gets back, and is a key man for this French team and <laughs> driving the team forward. And he gets a big, big try for France to take the lead for the first time in this game. And the conversion from JP Barak, such an effective kicker, gets the conversions. That's a crucial one to take it at 21 14. His 91st try in the Sevens World Series made his debut in Wellington way back in 2013. What a time to score your first try of the weekend. They get the maximum with the conversion. 21 14, France lead. Long time to go. Five minutes 30. An eternity in the game of rugby sevens. His Gonzalez handing off would be French defenders. Pellandini now to Alvarez. Great story, him too. Missed 16 months of rugby with an ACL. And here comes a Sadzuk, the new captain, who burst through two defenders. And he's by the post as well. We're going to be level again. Oh, these two teams are just going back and forth. Neither one giving it an inch. It was Osadchuk who wasn't able to track Perez on the last try. And here he is, picks it up from the base. And he goes right by Stefan Perez. And Forne there to go in for a try of his own. And takes it under the post, crucially. Which should make the conversion easy enough for Argentina to tie it up. And what a cracking final we've got here. Both teams want this so, so badly. It's been a long tour. It's been a good tour for both teams. And we got a big four and a half minutes coming up. Valuable points on offer. Big time. France, 21. Argentina, 21. Four minutes, 15 to go. Bellandini kicks the same direction. This time, a little bit of time for Jonathan Logel. But look at Iskolo, he's all over him like a cheap suit. But France come away with it. Barack, little dummy. Ray doesn't take the dummy. Replacement for France, one of their new players, Andy Timolt, the 18-year-old. What a moment for him. He's got the penalty for his side here as well. But that's brave from Jonathan Daray to, to bring out the debutant here. Andy Timo from the Massey Club in Paris made his debut in. Los Angeles last week. Could he be the difference maker here? Oh, he's a big man, isn't he? He doesn't look like an 18-year-old. Brings it involved in that first collision. Obviously very, very physical. France do get the penalty, and after some of their games, at the end of their semi-final particularly, they looked very tired, so content to slow it down and go to the line-out. Absolutely, that's their game, yeah. And Argentina weren't looking, so he's just dished it to Loretra. And now Barak, who's... Back to his best here in Vancouver. He disappeared from the sevens tour for a while to go back to 15s. But JP is feeling the good stuff. Fournier gets it off the floor to Timo. Here's Perez. What can he conjure up now? The little wizard in midfield for France. Logiel. No one's played more games for France sevens than him. Loretra arrives to play scrum half. Riva offloads off the deck to Perez. It might open up for Fournier here. France patient again. Here's Timo, does well, climbs high. Big man, six foot four. Play offload on. over the top to Logiel. But Iskodol, the urgency to get on the deck and win the ball back for Argentina. Wade's going to kick, and guess who's on the chase? It's Marcos Moneta. He's so fast. Larecha for France. Moneta gets there, dishes it off. And Tobias Wade. Well, Donna down behind the posts. <laughs> there is no accounting for straight line speed in the game of rugby sevens. But Marcos Moneta has buckets of it. Oh, and Argentina, oh, you thought France were in. The offload doesn't quite go to hand. And great play there on the ground from East Grove. And then it's Wade, knowing where Marcos Moneta is, knowing that off the turnover, France are not going to be well organized for that chase. And Moneta, this is actually really clever. He's, he tempts <laughs> Loretta into running past the ball, knows where Wade is. Wade's the man who kicked that, chases it all the way. Moneta feeds him, and as you said, it's the weapon of Marcos Moneta. 
Argentina are so, so good at using that kick over there, overhead to feed him, to put him into it, better than probably any other team on the circuit at that play. And it pays off to take the lead in a crucial conversion as well. Well, one of the best Back chip and move. chase merchants we've ever seen in the game, Santiago Gomez Cora, the head coach, knows how to use the kicking game in Rugby Sevens, but his team all just flings the ball away, the 18-year-old, it's gone forward. forward. Perhaps a little rush of blood from Timo there. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Timo, he had that first great collision, but then he's had two loose offloads there, and it could cost the French. Firstly, got that try, and now with a minute left, Argentina have possession. And if they're able to hold on to it, they're going to have about 30 seconds once the ball comes out of this scrum to drain off the clock, and they, should, they might be able to do that. He has transformed this Los Pumas 7 side for Santiago Gomez Cora. Since he's taken over, scored 230 Boy. tries as a player. I reckon half of those Set. were with the bump and run. And they've got themselves in a winning position now. Just over 30 seconds to go. They've got a seven-point lead of Argentina. 28 points to 21. Wave. He's going to kick again. And it's Alvarez on the chase this time. Alvarez for Argentina. Picks it up brilliantly. In fact, it's Augustine Fraha who's come off the bench, scooped it up, and sealed this cup final, this gold medal for Argentina. Los Puma Sevens have gone back to back in Vancouver. Oh, the kicking game coming through for Argentina once again to seal it. Right at the end here, it's a bold thing to do. You're up by one try. If France get that ball, they're going to be able to go on the attack. But it pays off. Argentina get the win. They break French hearts here in Vancouver. The long wait for a cup final win goes on for France. The kicking game of Tobias Wade in the second half, crucial. And the second-ranked team in the world closed the gap on New Zealand at the top. They have won the Canada Sevens Cup final by 33 points to 21.